Hello, how's it going? I'm at my pattern table set up. Let me know if you can hear me and everything looks good. Uh, things have definitely been rearranged. I'm not used to the camera being right there. It's usually right in front of me, so I may look here occasionally by accident. So um, I'm hoping that this setup works. And today I'm um, cutting out the Amelia dress by Green Bee Patterns. It's not the dress I'm wearing. I'm wearing the Charlie Captain. This right here is one of my many Amelias. I think I have four of them. And if you have quilting cotton, because I know we've all been lured into buying quilting cotton because it's really cute and you want to make a dress out of it. You make a dress out of it and you're like, um, this is kind of stiff and boardy. You know, it's just not very drapey. This is a really great dress pattern for you. So I totally recommend it for quilting cotton. And you know, it's, oh, I'm not seeing your guys' chat. Let me see here. Let me see, let me see. Why wasn't I seeing your chat? <laughs> now I can see, I can see your chat on the, the YouTube thing. Hi Christy, hi Thea, hi Amelia. Hi Anatha. I can barely see the font there. I know this bird fabric is amazing, isn't it? Cotton and steel it came in a few colors, but they discontinued the blue pretty quickly too. So I'm just checking out all the chats here because I missed a few of you guys. It says I'm ready to receive chats. Watch it not be connected anymore after all my work. Hello, Ida. Hello, Flume. How are all of you Swedes finding me? I think that's, I love it. <laughs> the time must just work really well for you guys. <laughs> I'm still not getting my chat. Why not? Let's see here. Oh, you're excited to see me cut the fabric? Awesome. I'm glad. Okay, let me just do a few things here. I'm going to... Move you, and I'm gonna move you, and I'm going to do this. Okay, I'm gonna do this. Okay, so I miss anybody on Twitch, I'm really sorry. It's harder to show the, the chat on there for me. Okay, okay, exit theater mode. Sorry guys. <laughs> we love sewing. <laughs> Tea time. All right. Oh, so I got my patterns um, today. So that's quite the uh, bundle of uh, patterns. And um, I, what I'm gonna do is unroll them and then lay, the, lay it so that it's like this. It curls down on top of the table so that it flattens out over time, you know? Because otherwise they just get really squirrely to deal with and um the cur i really hate curling paper i'm sure you guys do too so, so there we go got those okay so one of the things i want to show you about my amelia that i keep blabbing about is the fact that i didn't finish any of the seams on this dress <laughs> and i i mean that literally so i'm going to show you i have not doctored any of this i've ironed it that's it okay so um if you see closely, all my edges are, they're raw. I didn't use any zigzag, no serger, no French seams, nothing. You see that? So I hemmed my facing and I top stitched on either side of my seam. That was my only stabilizing thing that I did. Hi, Carol. Yeah, I can iron the paper, Louise, but it's really thick. Did you see how thick that was? <laughs> so I'm sorry if I'm missing any Twitch chat. I'm still not seeing my, my unified chat here. Why? Okay, cool. We will stick. We'll stick to YouTube. <laughs> okay, so um, like I said, the reason I did this, I did this as an experiment because um, bias doesn't fray very much. You can see that, yes, this, okay, so first of all, I only cut the bodice of this dress on the bias. So everything up here is on the bias. Everything down here 
is on a straight grain and I'll show you that when I cut it out. I did that to save fabric but um, so the lower part of the dress is going to fray a little bit more. You see that? But it's really not that bad. Once it f has frayed, see this is the bias edge right here because the pocket is cut on the bias. And see when it gets on the straight edge, see it's a little more frayed. So, um, and I accidentally surged my center back seam forgetting that I was doing this and I only did it on the skirt. You'll see up here on the zipper, it's just raw. I call that raw when there's no finishing. Yeah, exactly, Christy. That's what I was telling them. Lay it on the table so that your patterns are like this, the curl, and then just weight it down. It flattens out really quickly. And then what I do is I cut out, um, well, actually what I do is I take the pieces of paper, like say this is my huge piece of pattern paper. I go like this. I kind of go like this. And I cut a hole at the top and then I hang it up on a rack until I um, am ready to cut them out. And then I cut them out, I cut them. But I have a big, big hole punch for that. So I left it raw because um, I knew that bias doesn't fray and I don't like the bulk of surging. This is, um, this would be a trickier one to use French seams on because you'll see how the sleeve, and you can see I've ripped my armholes. I'm very active. <laughs> so you see that the armhole is not a set in sleeve. See that? There, you can see the grain line on this fabric because the blue ink is dark enough to see it. Yes, the rabbit is what I used to pull punch. So um, because there's not an armhole and this is just straight, it's really tricky to do a French seam on that. I'd have to really think about how to do that. It's totally possible. Um, better how I did it here was I hemmed the sleeve and I just kept hemming the side seam there. You see that? And I just did that on the on the fly. You know? Um, that's the only seam I finished is the side seam there and then this accidentally. But I still top stitched it. Um, I top stitched all my seams because I liked the uh, idea of it. I like the effect. I love top stitching. And like I said, I was just doing this as an example. Here's another example of how um, I, this one didn't turn out so bad. I didn't pre-wash my binding and I used it as a hem facing. The hem looks fantastic, nice and smooth. The outside has these little torque lines. Can you see those bumps right there? I have the brightness turned down because the paper is so bright, so hopefully you can see that. I know that this, I talk about this a lot, and the thing is, like in person, this is a little bit more significant than probably what you're seeing on the camera, and I want you to be aware of that just in case you do that. So, obviously I don't follow my own advice <laughs> enough. I'll probably not follow it on this too, but I just want you to be aware of that, so. Um, so like I said, this fabric only, or this dress in particular, the bodice is on the bias, the skirt is not. So when you look at the, the print on the bolt, the birds are naturally at an angle. You see the bodice, they're straight across because when I put it on the bias, it straightened them out, you know? So, um, yeah, there's only a dart in this, um, and I'm also going to sew it in a way that skips a few steps in the pattern and does them at the end, because what I like to do is I like to leave my entire shoulder seam open, finish most of the dress that I can, I hang it up, I just pin the shoulders over a um, hanger and hang it up in my closet for a few days, and I let all the bias come out, kind of stretch out the dress because that's what happens with bias, it gets really stretchy. And it'll make my waist seem so low that I have found that I have to raise it up. And I do it in the shoulders because I've already sewn all this. And I'd have to detach it from the bodice in order to shorten the waist. So I do it through the shoulders. And because the proportion of the neck to this lower bodice part is a significant enough, I can actually successfully do that without... Um, shortening it too much. So, does drapiness to the, yeah, it does. 
Um, I The mods I did on this dress are I pleated it. It's not pleated in the pattern. And I also made the back a v-neck. And I did this, <laughs> learn from me. I did this because I will admit this dress is really hard for me to zip up. It's a very long zipper and I, it's like getting past that little spot on your shoulder blades is really tricky. So I thought, oh, I'll lower, I'll make the zipper shorter so I won't have to do that. This is the trouble spot right here. So the other day I wore this dress and I forgot to ask someone to help me zip it up. My hair is long enough that it covered the top of my zipper, but I went all day without my dress being zipped up and I didn't even realize it <laughs> until I went to take it off and it had ooched down a little bit. So um, that did not solve that issue. Um, the other strategy to use a v-neck in the back is um, maybe you just want it to be a little cooler like i keep saying i live somewhere hot or you don't have that long of a zipper so i actually probably will shorten or like make a v-neck in the back of this dress here because the only invisible zippers i have are 20 to 22 inches and you want your invisible zipper to be about two inches longer than the opening so um, i need this opening to be about 20 inches and and it's 22 right now so, all right, so let's get to it. It's gonna be a little awkward for me to cut right here because of the small table. And I have it dimmed because see how bright the paper is, you know? This is the Amelia dress by Green Bee Patterns. And um, I find, um, that I, I, I probably made more of this dress than anybody, and I talk about it more often than anybody. I feel like it's this like under the radar dress. The pattern company doesn't really talk about their patterns very much. It's not their main focus, I feel like. Um, so I mean no disrespect when I say I feel like this cover does not, does not do the dress justice at all. It looks, it, this is not the proportion the dress is. The waistline's more about right here leaving it low like this because your waist is here and this this to me looks like the dress stretched out and then they photographed it that's just my two cents <laughs> so um i do really love this dress though so I, that's my that's my two cents on it okay i'm just checking some things Ah, oh, there, my chat's showing up. Awesome. Okay, we are back in business. Yes. Okay. All right, so let's cut it out. So it's only a few pattern pieces. Um, I literally think that that's blood on there, and I apologize. <laughs> okay, so there's a, a two bodice fronts, two bodice backs, um, two bodice or skirt backs, and one skirt front on the fold. Here's the grain line. Typically your grain line would be this way, correct? Um, and your grain line needs to be always parallel to the selvage of the fabric. So let's just talk about that a little bit. The other pattern pieces are facings and pocket. And I obviously altered this pocket quite a bit because <laughs> look, at, I think this is the pattern piece. I made it a lot bigger. And I have a video on how to draft pocket patterns, so you can check that out in the pattern, the how-tos in the pattern one, so. Okay, so let's talk about grain lines. So on this fabric, this is, this is how it came off the bolt, right? Here's my selvage. The selvage is the finished edge of the fabric. The cut edge right here, Perpendicular to the selvage is, this is the cut edge, this is the cross grain, this is the length grain. The length always goes the length of the fabric. The length grain, length of the fabric. The width is the cross grain or the cut edge. So it's kind of easy to remember because you have cross grain, cut edge, length grain, length of the fabric. And in between those is the bias and it's diagonal, so it's at a 45 degree angle to either of these points. And when you look at the length grain, there's no stretch. The cross grain probably has a tiny bit. The bias has a lot. And that is why we can use this quilting cotton as a dress and it will um, not be boardy and stiff 
and it kind of gives you that opportunity to use all the cute quilting cottons out there. Don't go overboard, you know. <laughs> but because I, I have seen room, some really fun Amelia's, you know, comic book fabrics and things like that. You could have a lot of fun with this. I actually made one for um, my trip to Harry Potter World with newsprint from the American School of Witchcraft and Wizardry <laughs> called the New York Ghost. <laughs> and it had the New York Ghost all over it. Very subtle, super fan, total, you know, spot if you noticed it when I was at the park. So, and of course I took my, my picture in front of the Daily Prophet, you know, wearing it, so. <laughs> okay, so um, you can go about this a couple ways. You can lay, fold your fabric on the fold. I've ironed this fabric. Like I said, I'm going to have some, some, um, hello, Holly. Thanks for coming. I, um, usually I'm sewing Holly, but, um, today I'm going to cut out a dress because I don't, I've never cut anything out on camera and this particular dress is bias cut. So I thought it'd be a really good opportunity. It's one of my favorite dress patterns called the Amelia Dress by Green Bee Patterns. I'm not wearing one. <laughs> okay. Are there any other patterns that work well with quilting cottons? That's a really good question. What I would say is um, with, uh, if you're going to use quilting cotton as a dress fabric, I would pick a dress that's not drapey. So pick something with a lot of structure and seams, something maybe a little more fitted than loose. Um, if you're not going to bias cut it. Otherwise, you could probably take lots of patterns, bias cut it with the quilting cotton, and you're almost all the way there with having a pretty drapey dress. Like you could even take the Charlie Caftan and cut it on the bias and um, it would be pretty good. I think I, I would totally do that. Same with the Cali shirt dress. I think that would be a really great option. The, the problem with the Cali shirt dress is that that is a really long piece and um, you might have trouble fitting it. Same with the Charlie Caftan. So I would look for something with a waist seam so that you don't have really big pieces because um, you're, you only have a limited amount of width. It's not like you have as much length as you want when you're doing it on the bias, right? Because just look at my bodice on here. You know, my bodice is going to, see normally a bodice would be like this, right? And you'd still have this little piece of fabric. And if, you know, you positioned it right, you could still have, this is like a whole piece of fabric, right? Like there's the fold right there. But on the bias, if I put this grain line parallel to this, I just took up the full width. So it's not the great, greatest usage of fabric. It's why you don't see a lot of bias cut things. That and um, because it can be a little trickier to sew because it's stretchy. Yes, absolutely, Amelia. Yeah. And some directional prints would be really fun. It's always worth experimenting with on a fabric first. But I wouldn't cut rayon on the bias. There's no reason to do that. You know what I mean? Or this kind of fabric, chiffon. I would only focus on something like a linen, uh, cottons, the wovens that are a little bit less drapey, you know? That'll be awesome, Christy. The scout tee on the bias, that'd be really fun. So just remember, you guys, that it can get stretched out because the bias, once it's been hanging for a little bit or worn, it might get a wiggly hem, you know, an uneven hem. Like little girls' circle skirts, they're not cut on the bias, but so much of that skirt ends up being on the bias because of the way it's cut out that the skirt will drop down on the sides. It'll be fine in the center front and the center back, but the skirt will do this on the side hems because the sides are on the bias and they've kind of stretched out. <laughs> and so what you have to do then is, you know, measure up from the ground, the hem, all, even all the way around the skirt, and trim it off and then re-hem it. It's a pain in the butt. I hate hemming circle skirts. So, oh, my nose has been so itchy, you guys, sorry. The allergies are so bad lately here. All right, so, now you can put this any way you want on the fabric, like this, or like this. Mine is directional. I don't know if you've noticed that there's this kooky lady on here. Can you see her? <laughs> 
I almost put the fabric back when I saw her, but I committed. The colors of this, of this are kind of a little bit 70s, but I, I really like them. I, um, I, I'm not big on the 70s though, so. All right, let me, I'm gonna straighten out my fabric out here. And what I like to do is I like to always, no matter what I'm cutting out, I try and get an idea of how much fabric it's gonna take. Like, is it going to um, be, am I gonna be cutting it close, right? So I just kind of do that really quick. Like, okay, here, this is fine. I have, that's my top. You know, I'm just gonna like do it at the worst possible yield first. Okay, so I need this much for the top of my dress. You can see why I like having big tables. <laughs> I quickly outgrow even this table and it's um, like 30 inches by six feet. <laughs> and I'm already like, eek. <laughs> okay, so um, let's see here. I'm gonna mark where that's my bodice. I can't, I can't take that up. Could I do the bodice better on there? Yes, I'm just getting an idea right now. So here's my skirt. I lengthened the skirt about two inches. I'm going with that. So there's a shorter length. There's also a longer length than this. So I, I like my dresses a little shorter, like knee length or just above the knee, anywhere in there. So, all right, so you can see that this goes off of the fabric, right? And this is the front. So the front is gonna be a little trickier. So I'm gonna back it up a little bit and I'm just gonna kinda guess, sorry, that's the microphone, if I can get that all the way on there. Like I said, I'm just doing a really bad assessment first. And the back skirt has a seam down the center, so it's a little easier. Okay, so we'll obviously have to open out my fabric, but um, that's fine. I don't mind doing that. I would probably do it for a weird print anyway, especially if you had something like on that um, newsprint dress I had done. On, in the newspaper on the fabric, there was what would be like a photograph in the newspaper and it, and it looked, it was like a big black. It just looked like from far away, like a big black thing. Just like these big black flowers are very, you know, noticeable. And I had to cut that bodice out three times because it's, it looked really weird on me. So I just kept holding it up to me and I, I got rid of the black things on the bodice and just left them on the skirt. So the bias is a 45 degree angle. Hi, Nancy. <laughs> All right, so um, I'm, going to, I'm going to open this out. I think I'm gonna cut my pieces individually so I can see where I want these black flowers because um, I'm just gonna be playing. I do not want two black flowers right here. <laughs> so I'm just gonna kind of, you know, look at it, see where it's at. I don't want it to look too contrived. And I, what I need to know is this needs to be parallel to here. And the best way to figure out if you're parallel is just to measure. So let's say that says 11 and a half. And so, you know, it would have to come down. This is a really short grain line, um, so it's not gonna be so hard to eyeball it. If you're using stripes, I would totally recommend being very precise about how you measure the distance between the grain line here, making sure this is perfectly parallel. And if you have stripes, what I do see done in the garment industry is they will draw the stripes right on the pattern pieces. They, they won't do this anymore because it's all digital. But old school, <laughs> start tossing the pattern on the Old school, they would um, have pieces of the fabric right on the pattern pieces and they would match it up that way. And we're old school here because we're not going to do this digitally or computer wise, right? So you do what makes sense for you and you do what, like whatever. What I like to say is I spoon feed it to myself, right? If I'm just in doubt or if I have a lot on my mind, I make it as easy as possible. The fabric is quilting cotton, 44 inches wide. And this piece here is, um, I'm pretty sure it's three yards. We can measure it though. 24, 35, 36, let's say. 
Um, I've washed it. Oh yeah, so it looks like I probably got about three yards. Yeah, it's quilting cotton. This is Alexander Henry's um, a ghastly snip. Because if you look at the other fabrics in the group, they're, they're knitting and sewing related. They're really cute. The Gastleys aren't for everybody. They have a cult following. The Gastleys are um, these people here. So let's see. I'm going to see if um, I can cut around her on one bodice and maybe put her on the other. So you want to make sure you don't have any of your other fabric under there. This is going to look a little bit um, like it's harder than it is because my space is so limited, okay? I'm going to take this pin out. That's what's driving me crazy here. All right. So when I ironed this, this is one of my tips. Um, I don't, like, I still have a little bit of lint lava happening here. <laughs> so, um, and you know, the floor's dirty. So what I do when I'm ironing something like this is I put a chair on one side of my ironing space and a chair on the other, and I pile up the fabric on one side, iron it as I go, and pile it up on the other chair. That way it's not like falling everywhere off the, um, uh, you know, floor and everything. Yeah, exactly, Nancy, exactly. That's what I'm thinking too. But I also don't want two heads right here. <laughs> so, you know, there's that. I'm gonna see how this looks this way. So she might show up right there in my dart. How often is she? Oh, she's right here too, I didn't even see her. You're right, I'm not gonna see her. So now if I had a lot of fabric, I would probably just cut this and then see what happens and then recut one of the bodice pieces if I had to. You know, so, um, but I'm not swimming in fabric here. Like when I did that New York ghost, um, newsprint one, I had 15 yards at my disposal because I planned on using it for something. And that all that fabric is still sitting under my table right now. I can see it right here. And so, um, I never ended up using it, kept forgetting it for every Harry Potter event. It was also a very narrow niche. You know, the American Ministry of Magic. Nope, a lot of people don't even know that exists. So, <laughs> yes, I know it doesn't really exist, but you know what I mean. So. Okay, um, so maybe if I just go with it, put her there. Can I get another bodice going across? Okay, wait, I gotta make sure I don't do it upside down too. Okay, so let's look at her this way. So I feel like I may have to just not worry about her, but you know, it would be so much better if um, she were thought out. Okay, so this is, or I just skip her all together. This is my dart. I'm cutting the size large. I'm going to do this so I can see my um, dart on the other side as well. Oh my gosh, with a giant wool mat, that would be amazing. Every time I go to the fabric store, I look at them and I'm like, is there a bigger one yet? <laughs> I couldn't afford a bigger one, but maybe I'll get another one and put it side by side and just have two because it fits the width of that table so perfectly. I love that wool mat. Um, so I did that so that I could see where she's going to fall in my dart. See, right, right now she's right there. So that actually might be a good solution. Sorry, lady. She may just end up being on my um, skirt. I need a, a weight. I need to get rid of some stuff out of my way here. All right, nine and five eighths. So I'm gonna put that, I'm just gonna pivot my grain line a tiny bit like that. And I pivoted it, see, I don't know if you guys can see it, but this is my grain line. 
right here. So I just pivoted to make this more parallel. That's all I'm doing. 10, 10, perfect. I'm just gonna go for it. You mark them on the back too? Yeah, that's smart. Um, I put in a new blade, so let's hope I don't cut myself because I have a tendency to go like this and I always nick my knuckle. <laughs> Oops, I cut a little bit. Doing the inverted corners is always tricky with a rotary. That may not have connected, but I just go back and do it. My knife is so sharp, it's gonna be easy for me to catch part of the pattern paper. I'm gonna true this up a little bit. I really like right angles at my um, side seam. No, I don't pin my patterns. Not when I'm rotary cutting, so see it didn't connect. So I just pulled away a little bit and get a little bit closer. Like that. And now what I'm gonna do, okay, so I already cut this, this is so funny. I cut this, um, yeah, 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 so this is my left front. Yeah, yeah, okay. So I'm going to, um, I'm gonna mark it now. So I need this marking here and this marking here. Um, you can put this one on here. I don't really need that. And I need this one here. I'm, I pulled my pen away from there for this part because this has a um, hole right there going through the paper. All right, so um, let's see here. And I will admit, I, I, you can tell I've never marked this before. I'm doing this for you guys. <laughs> so I'm gonna poke my pen through. I'm gonna pull it through like that. And now I know where my pin went into that. That's the mark. I'm gonna do my dart. I'm gonna make sure all the edges. Okay, same thing. And same thing. This one, you can see I have marked it, but usually what I do is I just do the snip right now, like that. That's what that one needs to. That one, I don't really need that one. That's the center V. So I'm gonna do this a tiny bit more. Okay, so this right here is my armhole and side seam. Remember how I was showing you that it's kind of a weird armhole, that there's no distinction of the armhole where it ends at the side seam? That's where it ends at the side seam. That's why when I um, hemmed the armhole, I just kept going around to the entire side seam. I get rid of the pin because I don't want to accidentally rotary knife at it on it. That's awesome, Nancy. You gotta do what you gotta do. I do that on certain things too. You've seen me do that, you know? Okay, so we have our left front. Okay, uh, let me mark my dart. I, I, okay, so uh, if I were doing this on a production floor, that point is the mark right there that point that is the mark but i'll do it anyway right there and same with what's funny this one should be there as well oh maybe no 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 it doesn't okay yeah so i'm gonna do that one as well oh and i forgot to um pull my pin through let's see let's put that back on there and so i i'm holding the pin down on the other side and then i pull the um paper through how I do that. There's a knack to that because sometimes it yanks your <laughs> pin out. Okay, so that's my left front. Oh, that's awesome. You've never had the marks come off in the wash, meaning it does come off in the wash. You've never had a mark not come out, right? It won't come out with just a, a rinse, but in the machine with detergent, it does. Oh, okay. 
that doesn't come out with iron. Oh, cool. All right. So now I need to do this, the um, right front, right? So let's look at our other one in relation to how this is going to go together. I'll look at it a little bit. Do I want her poking out from my center front right here? Right here? <laughs> okay, so this is what I tell myself. So I know that a lot of people would be really nervous cutting out a bias cut dress because it's something totally different than what they've done and they're worried they're not gonna they're gonna run out of fabric. So this is what I can tell myself. I really like having a backup plan to make myself feel more confident. And so my backup plan right now is, I know there's a full bolt of this at the fabric store. The likelihood that it has sold out this week is pretty small. And it's a pretty current fabric, I could order it online. So my backup plan is to order more fabric and then recut out the piece that I screw up, okay? I don't think you should live by that, by having to buy more fabric to correct your mistakes, but sometimes it's what will kind of give you the confidence to go forward and just try it out, you know, you know what I mean? <laughs> so that, that, is, uh, that is what I would say, to give you the confidence. So I'm just kind of looking at what's gonna be on my bodice. I'm not a big fan of that these two are right next to each other because it's kind of repetitious. So, and I just know this from experience, you know what I mean? You can also use the Choco liner, but it does come off pretty quick. Oh, hi, Miriam. I think you're my only chat um, in uh, Twitch right now. <laughs> I had a lot of trouble for it to connect the time today. Um, you can cut it as a double. But um, what I have found is I end up not liking one of them. <laughs> I always forget it. So, all right, so here we go. Let's just plop this baby. Let's just measure first. And um, I think I'm gonna put her right there. Let's just see if people have notice it when I'm wearing it. Okay, so that's eight. I'm gonna pivot that green line. to be eight inches away. I had to slide it this way because my corner was going off of the edge there. Oh, nice, Stitcherly. Cool. Okay, nine, nine, perfect. All right, so let's seal the deal there. So, I'm sorry, my head keeps bumping the camera, huh? This is not my usual setup, I usually am sewing. All right, so um, I'm just gonna cut this out now. So we are making a bias cut dress. I don't usually cut things out on camera. People have been wanting me to do that. Oh, my blade is just so sharp, it keeps grabbing my paper. Um, and the it's just hard to get the setup right. So now we have this pattern table set up. I thought I'd give it a try. So it probably looks a little harder than it really is because I don't have the space. So here's my corner, here we go. And I'm so itchy because of my allergies, sorry. I'm gonna pull that closer to me and see what that looks like. Okay, let's move that aside. Mark my dart. Remember I said I don't really need this point here, but I'll do it anyway. Here is where my end of my dart is, this is where the end of my, this is my armhole, this is my center front V. I don't really need this mark, but I'm doing it. Do these little corners here first. I'm just gonna clip that one, I'm not actually gonna keep it. The one I need the most is the dart. Okay, now that I have all those pins out, I'm gonna go back and see if I um, need to trim up some of my cutting here. I don't wanna cut my pin though, so I'm pulling it out of the way. Okay, 
So um, like I said, I can see my hole right there. I'm just gonna clip that right there. I'll leave this. This is my center front V mark. It's the pivot point for the V. That's how that works. And then here's the end of my dart right there. So I know where the pin went in is my dart. And here's my lady. So let's see how my front bodice looks. So. <laughs> oh my gosh, you guys chat a lot. I'm missing it. Yeah, this is fussy cutting for sure. I'm just catching up. Absolutely, Nancy. Quilting skills do transfer to garment and vice versa. But I learn a lot from quilters. I like the things. Their little tactics are amazing. <laughs> okay, so here, let's look at my bodice here. You know, it's a half inch seam. So we'll get rid of a little bit of that. What do we think? I think that's good. No weird black flowers right here. No, the all over print looks like an all over print. It's not too repetitious anywhere. You can't even tell it's on the diagonal. I've always wanted to make one of these that in a stripe, so it's really obvious, so. No boob flowers equals a win, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, Amelia, or yeah, Rachel, you, I know that you don't want to use your good fabric, but um, you want to wear your makes. Exactly. Go for it. What's the worst that can happen? You'll have another garment that you're not interested in making, just like you already have. But most likely, you're going to probably make sure that it's going to work out because it's fabric you really like. Okay, so here's my bodice. I'll just set that aside. My front bodice. Now, um, in the garment industry, this is my little in the garment industry speech. When there are pattern pieces on the fold, and, and the back's not on a fold, so I don't even really need to give you this little speech, but on the, the, the front skirt is. Um, they would never give you a pattern that says cut on the fold. They would give you the whole pattern piece. And so when you're doing something like this, say this was on the fold, the best thing to do, the most accurate thing to do, the thing that guarantees success would be to go and make this pattern piece again in the whole thing. If it was on the fold, this one's not. So I just want to say that. Exactly. That's awesome, Nancy. So your needle sharp box is really what kind of pushed you to use the good fabric and to be like, okay, I paid for this. I got to use it. <laughs> I'm not going to be as concerned with my placement on the back. I'm going to kind of look at the fabric usage here because, um, you know, seeing that big piece right there is kind of appealing. And then it would be like that. Sorry, my head keeps bumping the... Just kind of checking it out. I'm already using a little less fabric than what we budgeted. Okay. And now if I were on the big table, this would the whole piece of fabric would be laid out. I would have all the pattern pieces on there at once. So it would be a lot more accurate. Okay, so let's do this one. Not as many markings and... Um, And uh, nothing, I'm not going to worry about the print. Okay, so I'm, but I am going to look at the grain line. And I need a longer ruler. So let's go for um, this 20, this 25 inch mark here. After your sandal stream yesterday, uh, Miriam, I went and watched Aramis play with your husband, PUBG. <laughs> it was fun. Um, I am going to pin this because I'm off the table right now and I need to slide it back on. Oh gosh. This is why I use quilting pins. I just bent that pin. I always use quilting pins though. I'm going to do it in a few places so it stays accurate. Pick it up and slide it. Get my ruler out of the way. Nothing nicks a, a new blade more than a ruler, <laughs> metal ruler. <laughs> okay, 
I'm gonna get rid of my pins now. I'm not a fan of cutting with pins near my rotary blade, but that's just me. All right. Oh, Nancy, such a good point. That you realize you were a better sewist than you thought, and the, fab the problem was the fabric, not you. That is a quote worth in gold. <laughs> Miriam, yeah, we did. I don't like Fortnite either. I play it because my friends do. <laughs> I'm terrible at it. Yeah. Yeah, right, Miriam? Exactly. The same thing happens in knitting. You're knitting with yucky yarn because you're like, I don't want to spend all this money on really nice yarn. But then two things happen. You knit with nicer yarn, you get a better product, and you're more interested in doing a really good job and taking the time to figure out what to do because you've invested more. So it's kind of a, it kind of happens on its own. Yeah, mostly what I play right now, Miriam, is this multiplayer in The Last of Us, which is a single player game. And um, it's a really toxic environment. I hate it, but I want this trophy. <laughs> so I'm playing it. <laughs> and I'm terrible. I actually got bullied in there the other day. Someone was messaging me, you need to leave, you're trash. I was like, <laughs> which just made me laugh. I mean, it definitely was like, oh, made me feel bad. But at the same time, I was just like, dude, if I am, then just help me out and teach me. I'm brand new here. I'm learning. You need to try, you leave, you're trash. I was like, wow. I just killed him with kindness. I was like, okay, sweetie. <laughs> Missed my trash can being on the left, I think. Okay, let's get this. So there's my um, clip. I'm just gonna clip it to there. The only other mark is my dart. I'm just gonna do a tiny little dip in there and then my, um, top. I, I don't need this. This is just a matching line. I don't really need that. It's not a very long distance. It's not hard to match. It's not a curve. It's nothing to worry about. There we go. That's my dart. No, I have not seen that documentary. I could be hearing that mom. <laughs> I mean, I see your mom. That doesn't help me out. The thing is, Miriam, if they hear I'm a girl, they totally change, and I don't really like that either. It's like, treat me how you're going to treat me. Because as soon as I talk on mic and I say, oh, here you go, dude, or sorry about that, then they're like, oh, you're a girl. They have no idea I'm 48, and, and I'm old enough to be their mom, you know? So. <laughs> um, let's see, the size of the rotary cutter blade. This is a 45 millimeter. And um, for a really long time, I really, really, really liked the 28 millimeter, which is about this big around. People thought I was crazy, but you know what I really like about it? And Nancy, exactly, that's exactly it. It does curves, inside curves, really, really well. So I found and that um, I was doing a lot of armholes and things like that and knits and stuff and the um, smaller blade is a lot more maneuverable. You can't do as many thicknesses and it does feel a little petite in my hand now. So yeah. Yeah, exactly. So I have um, 45 millimeter. I have a um, pinking blade. I hardly ever use. I got it on discount. I just have it for fun. And then I have my 28 millimeter. But this is now the one I use the most. I've just kind of switched over the years. So um, the thing is with a rotary knife, you guys, is that it's an extremely unergonomic thing to do. And I'll show you why. When you're using a rotary blade, your wrist is broken. You see this? You're not, you're, you're not using it in this type of motion. I went to hand therapy, I can really speak about this, and I went to hand therapy because this little guy and doing all the computer CAD work for, for um, pattern drafting on the computer and holding my book in bed, all that thing trashed my hands so badly, I, I almost had to stop altogether everything I do. So I went to hand therapy, and this was the one big culprit that did the most damage to me. You <laughs> literally you're being quiet over because you have no idea what you're doing on Twitch. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Just, just you can't hurt anything. Just try things out. It's only me and Miriam here. <laughs> Those are not ergonomic, though, Louise. They are still your wrist is still broken. 
There, I've looked everywhere. So it's the broken wrist thing, because you're not, your pressure wants to go like this, right? And you're broke, breaking it. And so I have things all the way up into my neck. You just cut out at different angles, yeah. So what I did was, the best thing I ever did was I hired someone to help me and then I got a stack cutter, the electric, electric stack cutter, which is <laughs> under my table still. So, yeah. Yeah, no pin, no rotary rule. Bingo. <laughs> and the other thing is um, new blade. Don't be cheap about the blades, you guys. You need new blades. It does all the work for me. I'm barely pushing, okay? Um, and that was the biggest thing I did was, because I've actually had this. This is an old Ulfa. If you look at them now, they don't even come in this color, I think. <laughs> so um, that is a testament for how long I've had them. And when she, the, the hand therapist, was like, what, you've had your rotary things for 15 years? And this was like almost 10 years ago. Um, I said, yeah, I mean, they're not much different. You can get ergonomic ones, but that's like a button and then you're, it's a, just a different injury. Okay, so that's my little thing about that. All right, so I'm not worrying about my print, I'm just going for it. But like right now, you know, I'm hardly pressing because it's so sharp. And not doing too many layers, which you guys don't have to worry about. But when I was doing production cutting, when we didn't use our stack cutter machine that would do a hundred layers for us, I mean, it did more than a hundred layers. It did five inches of fabric and the heavier it gets, the more dense it gets. And the most we ever did was 127 with that thing. I think maybe even more. Oops, I might have went into my neckline a little bit. I'm trying to stay out of the camera way. But you know, if we were doing say a special little, um, Halloween group, you know, for um, September, October, we would rotary cut it. And um, the most we I would allow was eight layers. And even that, you sometimes want to push it for 12. There's a dollar quilting. Are they, what brand, um, that's kind of cool. What brand um, blades can you get? Because I've tried other bargain ones and they are not worth it. I just stick to the Ulfa. But I've heard that there's like these Ulfa blades that are um, longer lasting. I just haven't tried them yet. I haven't found them. I haven't looked either. Okay, so here's my back. There she is. Do you see her? <laughs> She's way over here too. <laughs> okay. So I might be able to use a lot of my scraps for, um, yeah, my scraps aren't very big. I might be able to use some for pockets, but probably not. Maybe this one. Yeah, so that one's okay. We'll save that. All right, let's do our skirt. So, this is where my little um, my little speech about something being on the fold. Oh, there is it. This isn't on the fold. Genius. Great. That's great. Putting it on the fold is just it's too weird. Okay, so um, I'm gonna. I don't think I can double my fabric. I think I'm gonna have to do them individually. So you just have to make sure you remember to flip, right? One is right side up and one is right side down. Or face side up, face side down, okay? Otherwise, you won't have a left and a right. All right, so I'm gonna make sure. This little Ulfa mat is so, is so small. But this skirt's not a very big pattern. So all I have to remember is that I'm just not doing it upside down. I'm not gonna worry about the print on this either. But I am going to kind of take a gander at my other side because then I'm going to do this and I can fit it right there. So that one was right here. I can fit that one right there. Now this fabric lends itself well to the bias cut. But like I said, that newsprint one is really tricky. It was really tricky to deal with. If you want to see the fabric, I can show you. But um, 
the thing um, that really struck me about this that I had to watch for were these big black flowers because from far away they're really noticeable, you know, and it's going to take away from the overall dress. Okay. Now, um, does your dress need to be on the true bias? True bias means that this is, this is perfectly in line like I've been doing it. No, it doesn't. So if you're having a little bit of a yardage issue, unless you have some crazy print that you need to deal with, you can have this a little bit off like that. It's fine. And on a skirt, it doesn't even need to be on the bias. So if you're really low on fabric, do your bodice on the bias and your skirt on the straight grain. And if you really want to be economical, don't pick a one-way print. That way you can do one skirt like this and then one skirt next to it. Like this. You know? You can overlap right here. That would be the fold of your fabric, you know? So you can get a lot less. Use a lot less fabric. I know I probably went over that really quickly. Exactly, Nancy. So, but that's the thing is um, if you want to be a little bit skimpier on the fabric, you can just put the skirt on the straight grain. Don't pick a one-way print. And by one way, I mean that when you look at it, there is an obvious right way to look at it that if I looked at it the other way, the girl would be upside down or the flowers would look upside down you know like this would look upside down even without the girl right maybe maybe this is two-way but she is one way so one way means that the fabric needs to be used one way otherwise part of it will look upside down four-way means that it's omnidirectional omnidirectional <laughs> All right. Oh, Mi Miriam, these are the weights I like the best. Is the old irons? Th these are way better than these. That's what I usually use. I just am using them to hold down my thing right now. <laughs> I like them because um, you can find them at pretty much any uh, antique store. And um, you don't have to have them shipped. So they cost the same as something like this. So if you were to look for pattern weights, you um, can find these. Um, I glued felt to mine. I can't remember why, there's a reason. Why did I? There's a reason why. Oh, they may have been rusting. They are iron, so they could have started rusting. I don't know, maybe I can't remember why. Um, but this is an old iron. They're perfectly flat. Get one definitely with a handle. Some of them have wooden handles. They're really easy to grab. And I like that they're tapered so that you can get right up to a corner like that and still work around it. They're genius. And it's, you know, it's, it's appropriate. It's very meta. And you don't have to have them shipped. They, they're expensive. They're like eight to $20 each. No, it doesn't tear tissue. I mean, if you were to pull the tissue, maybe. Yeah, they're really heavy, but no. EPP cushions filled with sand. Oh, for your weights. Yeah, I had a friend use um, beans or and popcorn. <laughs> Don't do that, she got a mouse problem. <laughs> yeah, so. Oh, the felt wasn't terrible. No, because I, I wasn't using home sewing patterns at the time. I was just using them for work. I need another weight here. So, um, no. I can't remember why I did that. I have to think about that. It was a long time ago. Just looking at that felt, I remember when I had that felt. I sometimes have people saying, I just found a bunch of your weights at the uh, antique store. Do you want them? And I'm always, I just don't need any more. So um, normally I'd be on my big table. I would not have to shift this. Those just bend. And I would never pin. Uh, but I'm going to be, I'm going to pin this 
to keep it accurate. This wee Ofa mat isn't working out. So, um, get it off the fabric. I'm going to try and pull this all together like that. I, I, I hate not being right over it. Like I usually am going <laughs> a little faster. Um, I'm going to put this notch in because this is my back. Double notches always mean back. I'm going to put this notch right here. She doesn't use a whole lot of notches. She uses the um, drill. Uh, I call them drills. What do they call them? Just the dots. Um, that's for the pocket opening right there. Uh, I can't remember what this is for, but I think it's gathers. There are little gathers at the waist. I lengthened mine a couple inches. I don't need that. That's just a, um, a matching, and I already have the pocket to match it with. Oh, that's fun, Louise. He found one in the garden. That's so funny. <laughs> oh, I knew what you meant, Miriam. I don't think so. No, because I didn't use tissue patterns. I, I've always used these at work. Um, I, I haven't been sewing um home sew patterns for a really long time just not until recently did i get back into that so i'm pre i'm pretty sure that that's not why i did it i i feel like it was a rust thing because you can see there's a little bit of rust here we use these to paint our panels too yeah i really can't remember why it could have been rust these aren't see these aren't even as flat the irons are just better So here's my uh, grain line. I don't know if you guys can see that. I'll draw it for you. There we go. Oh, you can't even see that, can you? I got, um, you know, Nancy, I actually had to be really good at cutting um, with scissors uh, as a pattern drafter. That's where I got really steady. So, um, because you're kind of, if you're not steady with your scissors, your line, your, your curves aren't smooth. And you do it on that oak tag that you guys call oak tag, the manila paper. And one of the things that makes you a good pattern drafter is that after you've made your pattern, that your pattern's actually accurate when you cut it out because you had to cut it out in paper before there were computers. There are still definitely tons of companies using just manila paper, you know. You're welcome, Jennifer. So um, that's kind of, and I'm kind of a little bit rusty on it. The rotary, I'm, I'm probably smoother with a rotary, but I would never use a rotary to cut paper. And that's just me, that there's not like a rule against it. It's just, that's m uh, my preference. Okay, so I was just pivoting that, making sure that I'm still parallel. I'm doing this on the true bias because I have enough fabric in just in case you want to do that. But like I said, you don't have to be on the true bias. Just going to do what the pattern calls for. Oh, I'm a little shy there. Eek! You see that? So what I can do right now, because I haven't done that side, I'm just going to slide it over. If you weren't watching me, I would have left it. <laughs> so I have to make sure like this line is still parallel and I've cut off my selvage over there. But look, I can just do this. This was, you know, where it was cut. So perfect. I just made sure that this is parallel to that. We're back on track. I just need to cut it again. When you're doing things at angles, you do get some kind of funny things you come across that um, that your fabric le is left in some weird shapes. Okay, let's get rid of this. The seam allowance is half inch. Where did I work as a pattern drafter? Um, all kinds of places. Um, in the garment industry, I worked for 
um, women's, Missy sizing, uh, children's, um, and then I went into the outerwear industry, which I really, really loved. Um, companies, I doubt you guys have heard the comp heard of the companies, um, but one of them you might hear if you're old enough is um, Bum Equipment. <laughs> I don't know if you guys ever remember Bum Equipment. It was it had the B period, U period, M period equipment. Yeah, so. Oh yeah, thanks for reminding us, Rachel, that Closet Case Patterns is having a sale, 20% off. Use Yay Spring as the code. I think it um, ex expires on the 7th. Is that the one? That's the 7th? So 20% off on the Cali shirt dress pattern. So thank you for that reminder. There have been a lot of sales going on. You had a you had a shirt, Miriam. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I worked there in the heyday of the '80s. It was fun. Straight out of college. Well, I wasn't straight out of college. Actually, I'd been working for a bit. I worked there for a while, um, and I was the the owner's um, right hand person. It was intense. Really good though. Good for my, um, I, and we had a factory. It was great. Good for my Spanish and um, learning how to work, like managing a sample department. It was fun. I loved it. I work, uh, I work well with um, designers, and even though I really can't stand how they work most of the time, I work well with them. I don't know if I'm proud of that or not. Because <laughs> designers be crazy sometimes. All right. Let's look at my back. So how do we tell which one is the side seam versus the center back seam? And is that double notch right here? Okay. And that we know that this is our um, pocket. Okay, you want to be really gentle with your pieces because right now they are relaxing just with us looking at them and the bias is wanting to do all kinds of funny things. So let's make sure we have two the same. Yep, so here's our double notch. There's our center back skirt, okay? So I'm gonna be just really gentle, gentle with it. Or was that the, yeah, that was the, well that was the front? That was the front. Why is there a double notch there? Okay, so I take that back, but it's true. Almost every single back has a double notch. Front is one notch, back is double notch. You only see triple notches when you're doing midriffs and you're doing like this seam to this seam to this seam to this seam and you're running out of single double, then you go to triple. So that's the front. This is the back. I'm gonna put the pattern piece with that because that is one I will probably confuse myself later. So I have this nice little pile of scraps here. Eventually I'll use that for my pockets. All right, so let's see if I have enough fa uh, fabric left to do my back. Oh, look at all this fabric I have. Plenty. I think that this dress calls for two and three quarters. It's not very inclusive in sizing. Sorry, that's just the truth. Um, for the shorter one, it calls for two and a half yards for the large. And I think I got more than that. I don't know why. I think I got three yards. Or maybe she was she accidentally gave me three. So, yeah. I'm not finishing the inside edges, Miriam. I'll show you my dress in just a second and why I'm not. But I, I'm not going to finish them. I'm going to leave them raw because they, they won't unravel and um, they're less bulky that way and I just really like doing that. All right, so, okay, so don't be tempted. You see this big juicy piece right here? 
Yeah, I like to live on the edge. No, it, it actually worked out. I have a dress right here. I'll show you in just a second. I've been, I've been like washing and wearing it for years. Um, you write F and B. That's smart, Nancy. Yeah, exactly. You haven't printed any PDFs yet, Louise? I just um, showed you guys how on the last video, so if you are interested, you can check it out. All right, so don't be lured. Like, if you can get your pattern piece in there, great, but don't do this, <laughs> you know? Don't do that. This is the problem with bias and why nobody does it is because there's lots of waste. So what I was thinking, you guys, is that we could have, I was thinking that um, someone, who was it um, that just someone, one of you guys just told me about this, <clears throat> that they used a, sorry, bleh, there is a free, like, foot rest cushion thing called, by Friday Pattern Company, a poof, <sighs> and um, <clears throat> I was thinking like it's supposed to be a scrap busting project, you know, you, so you make it with your scraps. But what I was thinking is I really want to get you guys on the um, fan wagon of sewing a muslin and that in getting some cheap fabric to do it with. And then I know a lot of people like, oh, they want to make their muslin wearable and everything, but sometimes it's just not. And the way I do a muslin is, is so quick and fast. I don't finish any of the edges. I don't even cut all the pieces out. And then if you're like feeling like that's wasteful, what we could do is we could all be doing a constant sew along of this scrap busting project and we put all our muslins inside of it to stuff it. That's my idea. You can make little zipper bags with scraps, but how many scraps do you really need? Or how many zipper bags do you really need? That's what I always say. I probably just nicked my blade just now because I went off the table. Um, but anyway, that's what I was thinking, is I'm gonna show you guys soon how I sew a muslin. I'll probably do it for one of the dresses. Okay, so let's, I've already cut that side. I'm gonna rotate this so I can get it all onto the fabric. I'm gonna put that so my fabric doesn't fall off the side and then pull. Oh, really, Christy? Closet case has one too? Yeah, exactly. Okay, okay. <laughs> Rachel. <laughs> That's funny. I, uh, I was sewing a lot when polar fleece hit the market. Remember polar, you guys know what polar fleece is, right? I mean, it's like Patagonia made it famous with their, their like over the, head pullovers, you know? And um, when it finally like made it to the fabric stores, people went crazy, sewists went crazy. It was so great, you didn't have to finish the edges, it's super soft and warm. Some of it was made out of recycled bottles. Um, and I used to do a lot of store displays for the little store I was doing. I can't believe this is a triple notch. I remember this about this now. Um, and that's what I did. I used to just make pillows for my couch with all, all the scraps. And I would just, what I would do is I would just make a pillow, it's three quarters of the way sewn, put it next to my sewing machine, and then just stuff it <laughs> as I went. Okay, last piece of, of the big pattern pieces, then we can do all the little ones. Okay, and there's my grain line right there. This is my grain line ruler because I only I only draw grain lines uh, with my sharpie against it so I don't get black hands. <laughs> yeah, exactly, Louise. You could. Yeah, I would totally love to do a run through of my muslin technique. <laughs> they only sold polar fleece fabric. Wow. Yeah, there's a lot of outdoor uh, places online. I like the rain shed in Oregon a lot. Um, but, um, I saw Seattle Fabrics is on Instagram. I've been following them, which is kind of fun. I've bought from them too. 
They used to refer me to people for pattern work. <laughs> I didn't even know how they got my um, number. All right, so 10 and a half. And there's no way that that's gonna, so let's do it by this one over here. This one's 13 and a half. Really? Wow, look at how off I was, okay. Okay, we're good. 13 and a half. Thirteen and a half. I'm doing this like true bias, but you really don't need to, guys. It's a skirt. It's loose, you know? See ya, Stitcherly. Thanks for coming. Chatting on Twitch and trying it out. You guys helped me unlock all kinds of little achievements. Told you, it's like a gamer-based community, and it's kind of funny that... Uh, Twitch was like, yay, you got more than five people talking at once. I got like four little achievements. I got confetti and everything. It was great. <laughs> okay. Like I said, normally I don't ever pin, but because I'm running out of... Um, Cutting mat and my big tables have are uh, covered in cutting mat. They're really big cutting mats. I just don't want to get this all stretched out. So that's why I'm kind of writing it again. Writing it meaning like as opposed to wronging it. <laughs> okay, let's check it out. All right, let's do our notches. I can still see where they are because of the clip. Let's get rid of this a little bit. What is that? That's just a tear. Pocket. All right. This is my back. Triple. Triple. I'm just making sure I don't have two rights or two lefts, right? That looks good. Do I have an, oh, there's a the girl. She's so subtle. I might miss her. I know, Louise, I almost have 2,000 followers. It's so funny. My Instagram and my YouTube are almost identical. And I'm sure they're different people. That's pretty exciting. <laughs> All right, so let's do our pockets. Pockets are on the straight green. You need four. These are my scraps. For that. Remember those big juicy pieces we didn't cut into? <laughs> I sent you to text Juliet and, um, and you may have purchased a t-shirt. Which one did you get, Janice? Mine shipped. I'm excited. I got the little, like, it's like a boat neck red one, the one she had in her stories. <laughs> I like, the image is really cute and I like how simple it is, you know, so. All right. I think I can get my facings in here too. So, um... This one's on the fold, this one's not. So let's get my facing first. Oh, let's see, wait. This is this is the top, this is the bottom. The uh, top, bottom. I only need one of these though. I'm going to look at my other scraps here. I can see the grain line. Like, this is the straight grain. That's how I can use these. I'm just checking them out, make sure um, I can't get my um, anything on there. But I think I can get... 
my front on this one. There. So I'm going to try and make sure I get this on the straight grain. You can see your grain line on most fabrics. Some of them are really tricky, but you could also just keep it so that you can see the selvage and then fold it accordingly. Oh my gosh, I would, um, me too, Janice, I hope they do succeed. I love Liberty of London. I've definitely been guilty of uh, buying Liberty fabrics. I have a few Liberty things. I'm gonna try and use as little as possible. Get that piece off there. So I can see there's my angle there. So I'm just trying to stay away from that. Like I said, I don't really like cutting pattern pieces on the fold. It's not very accurate. But yes, it is the world we live in. That is how the patterns come. <laughs> but it is worth taking the time to make sure. You can feel your fold under the fold line right there. Sure, it's nice and flat. Make sure my weights are uh, far away from my curve when I cut. Move my weights. Uh oh, didn't make it. There we go. Um, I do not need any of these notches. I don't really need that dot right there. That's the one that's on the front. It, it's, it's, if you use your half inch seam allowance, you cut it out accurately, you don't need that dot. Okay, because that's the pivot point for the V so that you get the V perfectly in the center because you don't want your V kind of wonky. You know, you see that a lot with um, people making t-shirts because it is kind of a tricky thing to put your, um, your uh, neck band on a v-neck. There's some really great t tricks to doing it. All right, so let's see, we have our back facing here. I'm just gonna cut it out individually so I can use the scraps. I lined that up right on the, the print there. Flip. Trying to stick to pieces that I know I can see the grain line on. I am going to notch the um, center back like this, two notches. So I know that that is the center back and that's the shoulder. Let's see, we have that one, so now we need this one. need interfacing in those. Now I need my pockets and then we're done cutting. And here's my pocket piece. You can see I made it a lot bigger. <laughs> Um, and this pocket, which is great, it, it um, um, attaches at the waist seam. So it always stays forward, which I love, you know? <laughs> okay, let's see. Uh, which is the top of the fabric? 
it doesn't really matter so much with my pockets, but you know, I don't want some troll to say, you cut your pockets upside down. So I will just cut them accordingly. I can see my pocket notch opening there. This one's gone now. Let's see if I can get one more out of some of these scraps. This one. Okay. It's like this. Sorry, my head's onto the camera, I can feel it. If we use the pattern setup more often, I will definitely dial it in better, guys. I'm gonna do this separate. It's really easy to forget to do four pockets. You need two for each side. pockets throwing all my scraps on the ground so I don't mistake anything and I'm just gonna cut my interfacing out and I have a pretty big chunk left but really only yardage wise I have let's see how much I have left I have this much about a third of a yard Oh, nice. Miriam, you're doing an Alabama Shannon dress? Yeah, so that's about a third of a yard that I didn't use. Oh, God, sorry, guys. I'm telling you, it's tight. It's tight. Okay. Yeah, actually, I'm gonna, I like to fold my fabrics with the print showing on the outside so I can see it on my shelf really well. Show you my I'll show you my folding method <laughs> it's not scientific at all <laughs> but I will kind of put these weird ends in here um, I'll decide later some of those scraps need to be included and then I just do this I fold it in thirds maybe I'll just do it in thirds yeah or maybe just like that like that and then I like to sh see it like this on the shelf kind of like how um, what's the gal who does all the organization uh, uh, KonMari like that kind of like that not quite like that but kind of like that I think um, I don't need any bias binding Marie Kondo yeah thank you Ooh, oh my gosh, Miriam, eight Paga pieces. Woo! That's crazy. All right, let's do our um, interfacing real quick like. I like using the cut pieces of fabric for my interfacing because they stick. You know like when you're a kid and your kindergarten teacher had the felt board? Kind of like that. Now, interfacing doesn't have a grain line. You can cut it wherever you want. Here we go. But you need to make sure you have a left and a right.
Now, when you have an inverted a V like that, what you can do is peel this back like this and then keep going like that. There we go. <laughs> okay, so um, interfacing pockets. Dress. I don't need any of my uh, pattern pieces, so I'm just gonna put them away right now. I was trying to use the original fold, <laughs> even if they're weird. Okay. thing. I remember thinking, I need this out of my way. All right, we'll just do that. All right, what time is it? Do you want to, you guys want to sew it all? I'm just using a um, medium weight. Let's see. It says um, feather weight. I'm not that thrilled with it. Um, and I usually use fabric. I don't use interfacing. Half the time, more and more often, I've been using interfacing here. Um, oh yeah, you want to see? Oh, yeah, 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 Miriam, sorry. Um, more and more often, I've been using the fusible because it's what you guys have and you use. Um, but uh, like I say, I like to just get like a poplin um, and just a white, maybe a white and a black, maybe a nude, whatever, like something's neutral, even a pale gray wash it and just have it on hand and I use that as interfacing more often. It's easier to use and um, I don't know, I just like the way it feels better. Interfacing breaks down over time. That's awesome, Nancy. Yeah, you could totally do that. Okay, so yeah, at the beginning I showed you my Amelia dress. So the mods I have on this are the fact that I um, pleated the front right here. I cut the skirt on the straight grain, the bodice on the bias, and I put a V in the back, which I was actually going to do on this one. So maybe I won't. Um, and then I didn't finish any of the seams, except for the center back seam on the skirt by accident, because I forgot I was doing that. So I haven't doctored any of these, but you'll see that this is the most fraying I get. But look at this. See this? See, when it's on the bias, see the pockets, this edge of the pocket is on the bias. It just gets kind of fuzzy. So look at the bodice. The bodice is completely on the bias. The only seam I finished here was when I hemmed the sleeve because of the nature of the armhole. It's not a, um, a, a uh, distinguished armhole. It's, you've got to create it. That's what that little notch is. And so when I hemmed the sleeve, I just kept on going and did my side seam there. It's the only finishing I did. And look, I've I've ripped my dress a few times in the armhole. <laughs> so, sorry. This is, I, I wear this dress a lot. Like it's, it is, I don't wanna say this dress is hard wearing. It's more that I wear it hard, <laughs> you know? So look at the center front is a raw edge. I promise I didn't trim anything before I showed you guys. All I did was iron it so you could see it really well and the picture would turn out. I hemmed the facing. There's not even interfacing in here. That is so me. <laughs> this is before you guys were watching. Um, there's the shoulder, but it's softer. It's less bulk than surging it. 
It's great. I love it. I mean, it, yeah, I've had this for years when this fur fabric first came out, which was a few years ago. I've worn it a lot. And this is, um, it's got a faced hem. So the most fraying I get is on the skirt the, because it's cut on the straight grain and even that's not so bad. Because you know, the, the side seam is at a slight angle. So the most I have probably is at the waist in a few places. This is actually a sewing thread right there. This and that, this one. Oh no, that's, I don't know. No, no, that's the skirt. So I could clean it up a little, but I don't really need to. I ripped it over here too. <laughs> Cotton's kind of brittle sometimes. So here's my invisible zipper. See, it's a raw edge. And then I forgot on the skirt. And then on the outside, I stitched all of my seams. I didn't need to though, you can tell. It's super comfortable. Because of the bias and the fact that it's cotton. But see, I, I've top stitched my waist seam. I top stitched my, this is my center front. My center front. Um, my side seam, obviously, because I hemmed it with the armhole continuous. I top stitched the uh, side seams except for where the pocket is. And I uh, cut this skirt on the center front fold. And then I top stitched the back seam. I like top stitching. Waist seam a little bit off. Whatever. It's super comfortable. I'm wearing Mee Maids all the time. I wear them every day. And um, I can tell what I grab the most. And this is one of them, even though obviously it's seen better days. And then when I sew it together, I'm gonna leave the whole shoulder area, this all open, and do it at the very last second after I've hung it for a few days and let it stretch out. So, yeah. Yeah, so there we go. So, and if you're not seam finishing, it goes together pretty quick, except all that top stitching adds triple the sewing time, but it's faster. You know, it's not like when you're putting it together. Do you, Louise? That's awesome. I know, you do really notice people. You know, it's like, I, I feel like you, know, you see that person that's kind of dressed quirky, and now I'm like, oh, I'll bet we could be friends. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, that's where it's like, I also came from Humboldt County. So there is that. I, I feel like it uh, makes you a lot more inclusive of all people, you know, which I love. We all have a story to tell, don't we? So, all right. So, um, all right, here's my question of the day. So you guys know my Me Made pl Pledge. Okay, I wanna just one more time reiterate the fact that Me Made May is not an exercise in posting as many things as you've made. You can totally do that. But I feel like there's a few people that are really intimidated by that or photographing them wearing it. And I like the Sew Over 50 flat lay exercise they're doing where they lay it on the ground and put some shoes with it, necklace or hat or whatever. So Me Made May is just an opportunity to make a pledge to yourself and you can outwardly say it to the world to hold yourself accountable for it. And it can be whatever you want. I saw someone in our chat said, I pledged to sew every day this month, even if it's for 15 minutes. That's awesome, you know? And so my pledge this month is to find a knit pattern or draft a knit pattern for a t-shirt and find some knit that I love and make my own t-shirts again because I haven't been buying them and I want more knit t-shirts. So I'm wondering, you guys, I might be able to um, document that progress and maybe do some streams kind of spontaneous in the middle of the week, right? Miriam, that's a great way to put it, selfie fatigue. And I feel like there's a lot of pressure, especially for someone like me, to post um, everything that I make on me. And I'm totally happy to do that, but getting that picture taken um, so that I, you actually see what I'm wearing very well is really tricky. My lighting's really great in here, but I, my arm is only so long and my dress is longer than that, you know? That's awesome, Nancy. I'm so glad to hear your mountain views are working out for you. You're a pretty petite gal. I'm sure you have your own struggles of finding jeans that fit, right? Oh, that's awesome, Miriam. That's good to know. I've been getting a lot of really great t-shirt recommendations. 
So my my idea last year was to take my Moneta dress and turn that into a t-shirt because I love the Moneta dress. I love the way it fits. I love the feminine um, style of the t-shirt um, because it's a cap sleeve, it's scoop neck, and it's softer. It's not the uh, t-shirt style sleeve. It's a set-in sleeve. Goose neck arm that will hold your phone and then use the timer. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually have a little timer. <laughs> but, you know, it's just one more thing, you know? Like, I'm creating thumbnails. I'm cutting out fabric. I'm getting hammer positions. You know what I mean? My little... I used to have a little bendable thing, and then it fell apart. Like, I used it a lot, you know? <laughs> and I actually have a tripod that will hold my camera. Girl, I know. Exactly. <laughs> you feel me? <laughs> Yeah, so, um, and I set up a whole photography corner of my shop, you guys. I'm not using it because I can't get the lighting right. Yeah, check it out, Rachel. The Mountain View was fun. We did it as a sew along. We dragged it out all the steps so that you guys could really delve deep into it. And there's a few. I'm sorry, the very first video, the prep one, and my sound is off, but I fixed it and then I repeated everything. Um, I sew, you know. I, I don't know what I'm doing with this video thing. So, um... But yeah, we went over the fit, the sizing, what to pick, how to buy the denim, how to print the pattern. We went over all of it. The, the sew along this month with the dresses is going to be a lot faster. You yell cheese out at Nancy. <laughs> I like the way Odossier, you know, Ellen Mason puts it. She's like, I just brush my teeth and smile. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. Right, Nancy? I hate posing too. I know. I know. I still don't have a good picture of this dress. I don't even have a picture of my like Audrey jean jacket. But I think the, the flat lay is a good idea. I need to do more of that. Because I'm not about how does this fit me. I'm about getting you guys to sew it and fit it to you. That's what I want. I really am just trying to get more people to be more confident about trying. Instead of saying, what if I fail? Saying, what if I tried? today? What if I just tried to do this one little thing? That's all I'm going to do. Because sometimes, you know, when I'm procrastinating something I really hate, I just tell myself, all you have to do, Sarah, me, is open the book, whatever it is, you know, like whatever the project, all you have to do is open the program on that computer. All you have to do is decide what the name of it'll be. Whatever I'm procrastinating, that's what I tell myself. Then it kind of gives me the little impetus to be like, okay, all I have to do is do this one little tiny thing that'll take one minute. And then I'm like, oh, this isn't so bad. And I do it you know? So, um, but Me Made May is just an opportunity to make a pledge to yourself and um, help get help following through on it, you know? So I really feel like it's a good opportunity. You don't have to, and she very explicitly says this on her blog, the, the creator of Me Made May, the Sozo blog. She says, this is not a place to um, show off all of your Me Maids. You can do that, but you don't, that's not what it is about. That's just their personal challenges. That's awesome, Mary. Yeah, put the emphasis on mending. Yeah, some people are just documenting what they have in their wardrobe and seeing what they grab and what they don't grab and what to do with those pieces. You know? <laughs> awesome, Rachel. I'm glad. So, I, I like for me, it's this t shirt thing. Because I'm not going to take a picture of myself wearing what I'm wearing every day for the world. I wear me maids every day of the year, no matter what. There's days I don't, but I just, I just have a good library, you know? <laughs> right, Nancy? Exactly. When I don't want to work out, I say, I'm just going to put on my sneakers. And then, yeah, maybe it'll lead to that. Exactly. Yeah, just kind of those little things to kind of get ourselves to do it, you know? <laughs> so... Sometimes I'll be like, I really don't want to fold all that laundry. You know what? I'm going to put on Netflix while I do it. Yeah. Exactly, Miriam. Exactly. I don't really need to document that I'm wearing Me Maids. You don't need proof of that, right? You don't need me to prove to you that I'm wearing Me Maids every day. There's no one needs to prove that to me either. But I would much rather see people trying to follow through on something that they haven't been wanting to follow through on or they've been just having trouble figuring out how to do, you know? Because it's about doing more making for ourselves or knowing where our clothes come from, which is really important. So that's my little platform today. So if you guys are interested, um, I might have some surprise streams. Feel free to join if you want this month um, on 
my t-shirt pro process because that's my pledge this month. And um, it just may be a bunch of me going, yep, this didn't work, you know, but I want to do it. And it also means I'll probably have to set up my cameras on my, ca on my uh, surgery and my home machine, which are right there, my surgery mainly. Not hard, just one more thing I gotta do. Me too, Miriam. I love the um, sew my size hashtag too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so um, I'm just reading you guys' chat. So yeah, I know I love seeing all the different patterns on different bodies. That's what Ravelry is amazing for, you know? I love Ravelry for that because you can see, okay, I was going to make this sweater. I was going to spend 40 hours sewing, knitting myself a sweater. And none of these women that it looks amazing on have boobs. They look amazing in the sweater. So the sweater might not look good on me. So, you know, it's like, I know I would say boobs, but that's just it. You know, for me, that's my struggle. <laughs> so... <laughs> Cool, yeah, um, I haven't been working with knits much, but I used to do it a lot. So I have a cover stitch on my machine, and um, I have a Baby Lock Evolve. It's a really great mis machine. So let's see, I have to ma make sure that it's still doing everything it needs to be doing. <laughs> and um, if I can't get my cover stitch to work, maybe I'll just figure out a different way to do it because, you know, there's other ways. But knits are better on serger and cover stitch. I agree with that. It probably needs a, I've never had it tuned, but it's, you know, it does work really good. I couldn't use the cover stitch recently on my daughter's prom dress, um, but the fabric was such a nightmare. I was like, yeah, yeah, I forgive you. I don't blame you. I wouldn't want to sew this fabric either. It wasn't even knit, so, you know. Yeah, exactly, Louise. That's exactly what Miriam said. She said, I love seeing all the different patterns on different bodies. Me too. Yeah, and so I do want to document, hey, this is what my measurements are, and this is me wearing it, and I'm going to do that with all my garments and maybe just have like a page of thumbnails somewhere, like on my website, because I feel like it's such good information. And what modifications I did, you know? Like, I know you guys, like when I leave these shoulder seams open, if you guys weren't watching me, this is what I would do. I would actually just chop off an inch and a half off the top and, and sew it and be done. I would never even hang it. That's how confident I am about this dress and how much I know it's gonna shrink. Or shrink, I'm sorry, stretch out. So, but I'm not gonna do that. I'll we'll leave it open and I'll show you. Cause I, I, the, the first couple times I did that, I was like, well, this is the, I did this every time. I cut three quarters of an inch off both sides. Inch and a half, you know? Oh, I know, Nancy. That's because the the uh, the rib collar needs to be sh much shorter than the neck opening. That's why they get wavy and bumpy. And it needs to be on the cross grain too. Okay, so that's my plan. Maybe maybe you'll see me pop on here and do that. Um, because I was thinking about dedicating June to sewing knits, but at the same time, I want to do this pledge. So maybe I'll get my t-shirt pattern ironed out and then in June I can sew myself a couple because I also need some like house pants and shorts and things too. <sighs> There's still holes in my wardrobe. I do not need probably more dresses, but my dresses are getting so worn and tired. It's good. I'm going to have four new ones at the end of this month. So we'll sew this um, on Thursday. I want it now. And then um, what's our... Um, What's the, what was the calendar? I can't remember. Moji pants from Seamwork. I think I have. Yeah, because I've made it before, Louise. That's how I know to cut that mount off. <laughs> Nancy, exactly. Yeah, I don't have those pants, but you know what I think I'm going to use? I have the Caroline pajama bottoms. I just want some house pants because literally I'm putting my pajamas on at four o'clock sometimes because I happen to be home. Like yesterday I took the afternoon off and I did stuff at home and I put, and I, by then I'm like, okay, I'm tired of my thighs rubbing in my dress. And, um, I just don't want to, I was weeding in my front yard. You know, I'm not going to do that in my pajamas. I promise, promise. But, um, I just want some like cropped pull on cotton pants to throw on and little tank tops and stuff at home. Um, and that, that aren't jammies, <laughs> you know, and I think my family would appreciate that too. Cause sometimes my husband's like, wow, jammies already, huh? I'm like, they're not jammies, they're house clothes. You know, they're totally jammies. So I'm gonna, um, you put on men's underwear in a tank. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. See, I, I 
want to take the bra off too. Exactly. So I'm going to make some, I think Caroline pajama bottoms because they just are perfect. That's exactly what I want. I might just make them straight legs so that they're a little bit more um, wide at the bottom and make them cropped and then make some shorts. They're not probably ones I'm gonna go to the store in or anything. I just wanna look, look a little bit nice at home, <laughs> but be comfortable. Cool, well thanks for coming you guys and chatting with me. Um, someone try, try out exclamation point commands in the chat. Let's see if it worked. Secret jammies. That's what I'm going to call them. House pants. Secret jammies. Secret jammies. Yeah. Nothing happened. Do you know how long I spent working on that? <laughs> someone tried on YouTube. So I'm not sure how to, I, I enabled those bop. Maybe, okay, you're not working on this. Okay, wait, let me, let me do this. Do, do, do. Okay. Okay, just a second. Oh, they're opening. Maybe I needed to have those chat bots open. I don't know. Oops. Okay. Um, try one more time. You're welcome, Janice. I'm happy to be here, you guys. Okay. Let's see if it works. It's not working. Wah! I don't know how to, I'll, I'll keep working on it. Okay. <laughs> Ugh. Technology. <laughs> I'm not gonna tell you my commands yet. It's a surprise. <laughs> but I made one for, uh, of the, if you type in commands like that, it'll show you all the commands, all the words that you can use. So. There's like eight of them. Maybe you have to be a mod. I don't think so. I didn't make it that way. I saw that option. Maybe I should type. Okay, I'll type it. I'll have to go to my chats too. Okay, let's try it on YouTube first. Nope. Let's try, or I tried Twitch first. Let me try YouTube now. Brooke's taking a uh, class today or, or teaching a class. Oh, yeah, that didn't work either. Womp womp. Zooming. You can zoom on Twitch. I didn't make that a, um, I didn't make that a uh, command because people on Twitch know that usually. But yeah. I'll figure it out. Exactly, Miriam. Balls. I uh, followed so many YouTube tutorials yesterday. I had to cobble them all together because one person's like, here it is. You just click these three buttons. I'm like, yeah, you didn't tell us that you had to have all these other things downloaded. Oh, and then the other thing is um, I want to try is someone wanted me to enable GIFs in the Twitch chat. So the only one I she wanted to do is this one. That didn't work. Yeah, I'm so jealous that you have your in-house um, tech person. That's so awesome, Miriam. I ask people things like that and they're just like, I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> oh, okay. Right, well, maybe you'll see me this week. And you know what? Um, I'm probably gonna, if I do my knit thing, I'm gonna probably do it in the afternoons. I'm gonna try a different time. So um, maybe we can catch a few different people that just can't make it to these morning streams, you know, especially in Oceania, you know, like Australia and, um, you know, all the areas in that nether reach of the world for us. So, um, Maybe like a three o'clock p.m. 
to um pacific stream that might leave a lot of you swedes out though so i'm sorry about that but you can maybe if you're interested in it you can watch the replay and then if i'm not getting a lot of interaction at that time i'll um I'll bump it to the morning we'll just experiment how about that so that extra freewheeling stream will i'll bump it around Oh, awesome, Louise. I'm glad you like that bias cutting demo. And did you see I have a bias um, sewing demo as well? And at the beginning of it, I show you how to piece all those cut pieces of bias together in a continuous um, piece. So check it out. It's right at the beginning. So if you don't want to do the sewing part of it, you can just see how I piece the cut pieces together so that you have one long piece of it. I said the word piece a lot just now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, maybe I need to pay Sid to troubleshoot my whole thing here. <laughs> so, okay, guys, have a great Saturday. I didn't even ask what you guys are sewing. I would love to know. Um, and I hope that you guys um, have a great weekend. The weather is great. He do it for free. People's time. I really value people's time. I value my time so much. That's why I'm always like, let me pay you. Let me do something for you. Well, maybe I can send them something, you know. A clean canteen? <laughs> Let me trade my husband's stuff for yours. <laughs> oh, cool, Louise. I'm glad. Yeah, I'm going to do more how-tos. So start throwing them at me what you guys want. I can just record those and then put them up. It's really nice. I'm not doing them highbrow. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome, Miriam. He can be my mod, too. <laughs> he wants to quit his job. I don't blame him. I don't know what he does. Um, by the way, I watched an excellent how to sew an invisible zipper um, tutorial today um, by Blueprint. It was really good. Bye, Nancy. Woohoo! Your machines are happy. He does IT stuff. Okay, well, I would totally hit him up if he if he really wants to help. I feel like it's three quarters of the way there. I did all this crazy stuff, <laughs> so. Um, have a great weekend. I'll see you guys soon. Sooner than maybe Thursday with my knit, my knit pledge. My me made knit pl pl pledge. That's a lot. That's a lot of saying. <laughs> and um, then we'll sew the Amelia dress um, on Thursday. Maybe I'll try and finish it that day except for the shoulder thing. And then um, I can't remember what's on the calendar for next Saturday. <laughs> Caution ice on road come up on, on car today. What does it mean? What does that mean? Bank holiday weekend. Oh, it's cold there. Oh my gosh, it's like 80 degrees here. It's warm here. You're gonna start seeing me in strappy dresses soon, guys. Even air conditioning isn't enough sometimes. And iced tea, watermelon. I ate a whole ton of watermelon before I started today. I love watermelon. Yeah. All right, I'm down. I'm just chatting with you guys. <laughs> it's hard for me to say goodbye. Okay, I'll see you guys soon, and um, thank you so much for coming, and um, have a great weekend. Um, bye.